Good morning. I went to that box of slides and photos. I'm going to share a few of them for you, with you, I should say. And um, I'm using the Sony HDR SR12 so I can get some close ups. I'm going to try to just show you a little bit of the 35 millimeter slides here, and it's very, very difficult. I don't have the equipment I used to have. I used to have slide viewers, and I had all that stuff, some of which is still in my photo closet at the old house, but most of it I got rid of. Um, these are my Kodak splicing tapes. Super 8, 8 millimeter, 16 millimeter, whatever that was in the box. And I want to share with you, when I used to go to Wheeling or wherever I used to go, I used to always, I don't smoke, of course, never did. Uh, I used to always pick up these matches. They used to have them in the motel room, like in the downtown of Motor Inn. And uh, wherever you went, a lot of places they would have these you know, you compliment you just so I just grab them, you know. So, souvenirs like places that are no longer around. So, I want to share a little bit of that with you and um, different things here that I have acquired. And also, I want to play, I have a small uh, cassette recorder. You've seen it before. I want to just momentarily play uh, some of these slide narration tapes that were automated that I told you about in the last video and different things so I'm gonna to try to keep this short I can't run an hour and 17 minute video not on this camera it'll never 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 render it'll crash for sure so um, it would take me a week to render it so um, we're gonna to try to keep this short I'm using this camera so I can get down real slow real close for you you know and show you, I don't know if that's upside down or not, isn't that something? I think it is. <laughs> um, to kind of show you what I've got here. So I'm going to put you on a little tripod, and I'm going to have to use a flashlight or somehow hold it up to the light so you can see the slides. We're going to give it a try anyway, so bear with me. This is a Rube Goldberg setup. It certainly ain't professional. Stand by. Okay, this is a 35 millimeter film shot, uh, snapshot that I took with my, uh, at that time, I had a Pentax K1000, which is also uh, all manual, but it did have a built-in light meter, of the WWBA Jamboree, and the ticket was only six bucks at that time, 1975 show. I used to use these as titles in the slideshows that I would present. Now, let me just clarify without talking too long here. I had a lot of friends in the neighborhood, uh, like it was kind of like uh, they were CB friends and uh, several of them lived several blocks from me when I lived on Broad Street in New London. So I used to put a show on for them like five or six people maybe it was nothing big uh just to kind of like bore everybody with my vacation stuff you know <laughs> but they enjoyed it i guess but um it became too much work i like i say it would spend maybe a month almost two months putting this stuff together uh to do the narration and everything else and do the research on it and i did a lot of it as i was going along in these different places so that's how that came about. So let's uh, show you more, some more slides here. Uh, this was my grandmother about 1975 or 6 uh, when she visited us on the Broad Street location, which I've told you so many times about. It's my mom's mom. She was a wonderful lady. She lived to be 92, I believe. This is one of these uh, store-bought slides that I used to put on my slideshows. 
A lot of this was just comic stuff, you know. My my audience wasn't noisy, what few people that did watch this stuff. Sorry about the shakiness. I'm holding the camera in the slide, too. Here is another shot I took of the old house in 1982. The house was in a lot better shape back then with my Pentax K1000. And just to the bottom left, that's my 63 Ford Galaxy. That's shortly before I got rid of it had that car for 17 years the frame went on it so I had to get rid of it here is my 1971 Ford Econoline that I customized inside I never did anything to the outside um, you can see the right front fender there it's about all I did um, I probably put some of those photos on there this was taken about 1982 also this is another shot of the van with the doors closed. Uh, this, this way of photographing 35 millimeter slides is certainly not the best way, but it's the quickest. With the door open, I had all this um, like uh, fur on the door, a tan fur and a speaker in the door and so forth. I have good photos, 35 millimeter snapshots of that inside look of the van. If I get time, I'll put them on here. Okay, the rest of these are of no interest, and a lot of them are very, very dark, because a lot of the shots uh, I did without a flash. Um, okay, let me get over here and find the snapshots of the van here. Now, I made a video on the 71 Ford Econoline interior, interior a while back. So if you haven't seen that, uh, it's a few years back. I don't remember how many years, but anyways, let me show you. Let me dig them out. All right, here is a shot of the, um, I believe it's a JVC 5-inch color TV that I had in that van. I customized it with paneling on the walls, and this is a, a ice box that it's sitting on that I built, uh, all insulated and everything for when you camp out. Uh, on the out, on the wall, you see a 12 volt outlet where I plugged in the television. This is a shot looking towards the rear of the van. Uh, that's the tabletop you're looking at at the at down below. In the corners are two woofers, uh, 10 inch woofers. Uh, I haven't finished this yet. It's not finished off. The ceiling was all foam and uh, vinyl and the seats when they were done which are not done in this photo uh, would be the same way and that's a light in the center of the room here is a close look at when I first started building it that's all foam there for the backrests and the speaker grills left and right Those, these are woofers only and I had the tweeters which you can't see up in the corners with the doors open you can see how I did the doors on it this is a 71 Ford Econoline as I had told you before not the same one we got now that's a 90 I got this one from Aikens Electronics it used to be a delivery van and they beat it into the ground I'll tell you to the right, you can see that ice box that I built where the television was sitting on. Uh, there was storage underneath the table that went in the middle. We also converted to a bed. It was a uh, five inch thick foam, which I had a uh, upholstery shop build for me and cover it with vinyl. This was taken down in the basement of the apartment we lived at 267 Broad Street where my attic workshop was I used to do my woodwork down there this is the overhead console frame that I built out of quarter inch Luan plywood and all the electronics the radar detector the stereo um, all the uh, mood lighting and everything else was all controlled by that console including the alarm system which I designed and built here is another shot, 35 millimeter snapshot of 
the beginnings of the speaker grills. All this wood down you see down there, this is three quarter inch pine boards that look like barn wood. It was stained and varnished. And then for effect, you can't see it, I'd go and buy drill holes and put square nails in it to really give it a nice rustic look. Here is another shot of that console I was building down in the cellar on Broad Street. And another shot here. Here is a shot looking at the inside of the van. To the left of the overhead, you see some wires coming down. I had Molex plugs or Canon plugs or whatever you call them. That was the wiring for the overhead console, which was not put in place yet. Here is the inside again. To the left, you see the cover where my thumb is on the photograph. The cover for the seat is lifted up and that storage underneath there. And like I say, that cover had a five inch thick foam rubber on it. So it was a real nice thick cushion. You can see that in the rear straight ahead. The ceiling light being installed, you can see it hanging there. Uh, straight ahead is the doorway which led to the driver's area, you know, the front and rear, I mean the passenger seat and the driver's seat, and you can draw the curtains for privacy. Uh, this was before I met my wife Sandy, of course. You could say that this was a traveling bedroom, but I never used it for that. <laughs> but I did use it for camping. I did camp in it several times. And um, when I did meet my wife, I did have this van still. And um, we went camping in it for a couple of times here. And it was, I'll have to say, you can't stand up in it. It wasn't exactly, um, how should I say? camper friendly because you had to remove lift up the bed close that down and then use the porta potty which we had a one of these portable toilets here it is as a seating and eating area I built that tabletop using three quarter inch plywood um, for mica I did the whole thing and you can see it's all that uh, nice plot pine uh, wood. It really, really came out good. And you can see in the corner there some little mood lighting. So this place uh, was quite nice when it was lit up at night. And one last photo here. That red cushion there was velvet. I don't know where I got it, but I got it at one of the discount stores. Just to the right of that, you can see the um, the wood grain. It's actually made out of three-quarter inch pine, and I routed it out. And in the center, I used a quarter inch mesh screen so that the speaker cone wouldn't get pushed in. And over that, I used red velvet. You can see the homemade light up in the corner. I made that out of quarter inch plywood in the cellar of the Broad Street apartment. Uh, this is all thin paneling. It's probably about a little less than a quarter inch thick. It was actually very cheap paneling, but it was real wood. Right in the corner below that is an L pad so I can adjust the volume of my rear speakers. And right where my thumb is on the photograph, that's the top of the um, seat leaning back and that was believe it or not ordinary furring strip that you'd get at Home Depot I just stained it and varnished it and uh, screwed it in and there's the tabletop you can see it just to the, just on the right side there a little bit one last photo here this was uh, my bedroom at in Broad Street apartment where I had my workshop in the attic. Uh, there's 
This was taken probably in the mid-70s. Uh, so I had a few videotapes up there. My CF550 Sony boombox that I used in the slide, automatic slide changer uh, automated thing. My AR turntable, my all-manual turntable. And that was my entertainment center. Where my thumb is on the photograph here, that's my AR2AX speaker, or one of them. The other one, uh, you can't see. It's off the photo. It's not in the picture. All right, this is uh, one of the wheeling um, matchbooks that I got from LB's Family Restaurant. Here is one of the motels I stayed in. R&R &R Motel in Dansville, West Virginia. A lot of times I would, on the way down to Wheeling, or sometimes on the way back, I did all my traveling on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And, um, of course, I'd go to these different motels if I didn't stay at the downtown or motor inn which is no longer there. It's another motel now. Great Meadows Motel. And I believe that's Uniontown, PA. I should read these before putting them on the video here. Of course, your Howard Johnsons, which were all over the place back then. No, I didn't need towing, but um, I guess it was in a restaurant, a diner or something, and I just picked this up as a souvenir. I used to do that because, uh, you know, kind of like, um, hey, it's like a souvenir of the town that I was in at the time. Bell Springs Manor. Uh, I think it's Morgantown, Pennsylvania. But you see it anyways. Of course, your Holiday Inn. I know I've got a lot of the Downtown or Motor Inn book matches because I stayed there quite a bit, but they're not in this box here. But I do know that I have them. So uh, wherever I went and traveled out of state, I always picked up book matches. Like I say, I've never smoked. You can see that these were never, never used. Um, just for a souvenir. No, I did not take towels from the motel. <laughs> I know some people do things like that. I've never done that. The most I've ever taken is um, the soap. There was an extra bar of soap. I'd take that home. And I've got several of those bars around, too, the little small soaps that they'd give you, um, I'd save those if they had the motel name on them. If they were generic, I didn't bother. All right, I want to play very briefly some of these tapes. Slide narration, 1974. Just briefly, and I'm going to get my little cassette player out here and hopefully the batteries are still good in it. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Okay, i got to change the battery in this camera. We'll see how long we can go with this. Now, what you're going to hear on this tape is a commentary by me. Uh, there'll probably be some background music, which I may, if there is too much, I'm going to have to cut it off. Uh, and then you're going to hear a tone. Like a thousand cycle tone, I can't remember two thousand cycle. I really made that tone too high, and you can hear it cross over into the left channel. That was the only design flaw of that I should have used the lower frequency. That tone, this is a one hour recorder, so you're going to hear that tone on the um, cassette. This cassette was recorded stereo. I'm hoping that um, it will come out all right. Let's go. I'm going to put a show on for you, like I've told you in the introduction in the movie portion of the show, which you most likely have seen already. 
the slideshow contains the history of all of these different places. Before we begin with the show, actually, we are going to have to convey across to you a few rules that we have always had. I was a big clown back shows. then. Number one, we would appreciate you being seated. Please remain in your seats now because we are ready to start the show. That was the tone. But you don't hear that. You're hearing it because of the one hour recording. Yourself. In other words, in plain English, keep your big fat mouth shut. <laughs> I was a clown boy, but the. There's the. No smoking. Smoking will not be tolerated in the auditorium at any time. Now, this. Each if time this smoke, tone would come up, there'd be a sign saying no smoking. Time. Smoke bothers the projectionist. He is a non smoker. We've had some terrific fires because people have smoked near the film and boom! It went up in smoke. And I want to tell you, it costs quite a bit to take one of these shows here and films and so forth. And the projectionist last year got so sick that he had to go home and the rest of the show was canceled. We wouldn't want that to happen tonight, would you? Okay, wise guy, I heard that. Please keep it, your behinds on the seats. If your behinds are not on the seats, your heads are going to be in the way, as you can see here, and unless your head is transparent, most heads aren't transparent, by the way, people will not be able to see through it, and it will therefore interfere with the people in back here. So keep on your seats, and if you have to get up, please duck down. If you get rowdy, you will be heaved out bodily. If you have to use the restrooms, you'll have to wait until this half of the slideshow's over, which is approximately a half an hour, give or take a minute, one way or the other, until you do so, because you will not use it now, because the show is already in progress. On September 26, 1974, I left for an 11-day vacation. I packed my bags, I hopped into my old Ford. These are all sl slides that, of course, were shown on the screen. London, Interstate 95, and arrived at Bushkill Falls, just off of Route 209 in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. That was my first stop. Bushkill Falls, the Niagara of Pennsylvania. Charles E. Peters first opened Bushkill Falls to the public in 1904 with a single path and a swinging bridge over the head of the main falls. Still owned by the Peters family, Bushkill Falls today is one of the East's most famous and worthwhile scenic attractions. High in the uplands of the Pocono Mountains in northeastern Pennsylvania, streams of crystal pure water bubble up through rifts in the primal rock. These are the headwaters of Bushkill Creek, a great swamp alive with the call of wild birds. As the waters begin their descent towards the Delaware River far below, they move ever faster towards Bushkill Falls, rushing between rocky walls through the Upper Canyon and Laurel Glen. Suddenly the stream drops over the edge of a hundred foot cliff. The main majestic falls. From the deep pool at the bottom, banked by innumerable varieties of fern, mosses, and wildflowers, the creek now... Remember, you're not hearing that tone in the actual slideshow. You're hearing it here because it's this is a one hour recording. Of all ages thrilled to the uh, taken views playback from the trails and bridges which laced the area, affording splendid views from many angles. Nature hikers I think you get the idea. The, the battery's just about going on this. So I'm following another stream which Alright. You get the idea. You normally would um, not hear that because 
the tone is on the right channel. This is the Marnell recorder, so of course you're hearing that tone. Each time that tone goes off, that tone was fed through from the stereo recorder right channel, fed through and out into the amplifier that was on that blue consulate thing that Dan has, was amplified through the amplifier, rectified and operated a relay, which as I described to you in the other video, changed the slide on the Sawyer slide projector. The left channel contained all the narration. I had two speakers at the under the movie screen that I built out of plywood and put vinyl on it. I'm not sure, but I think Dan might have that speaker system too. I hope he still does because it is a good speaker system. Um, and it was monaural uh, because of the switching that I had in the console. Both channels received a monaural signal, so it wasn't stereo. But when I wanted to play a stereo music tape through the system, I can just switch it to stereo. So I had all that built into the thing. So anyways, that's just the idea of how things were. There's other slides and stuff that I have that I may or may not share with you. Um, also, I'm not going to do that today. I have here uh, Bushkill Falls. It says do not use. There's a problem with this tape. A lot of these tapes never went anywhere because they were one way or another were either overexposed, messed up with one of the cameras I had, or something happened. So it was played. This is Super 8 because you got the big hole here. Um, it was played, but it was never spliced into the main movie film. Um, well, this is still going. If we crap out, which is going to be the battery. The same with a lot of these other recordings. This is an empty one here. And I kept a lot of them. Some of them were totally black due to um, something happened to the camera. And sometimes I'd record. I get a lot. I used to buy my film outdated from Barker's department store, long, long gone now, at like half the price. So if the film was really, really old, I wouldn't. I would expose, um, not expose it. I would just use it uh, as leader. But as you saw in that bag of loose films, I certainly didn't need any more. Um, I also have some slides of the Amish country. Um, but at this time, I'm not going to, I don't want to get too, too involved. This thing could go on for a long time. And I'm spending more time making these videos, which I enjoy doing. But I'm way, way behind on watching other people's videos. I'm way, way behind on answering my own comments. And a lot of the other videos that I watch, I don't have time to leave a comment other than thanks or good video, blah, blah, whatever. And I know one guy that puts a comment in before he finishes watching. And I know, I know, folks, because when I upload a video, as soon as it's uploaded and processed and the thumbnail shows, I play it. And let's say the let's say the video is a half an hour or an hour long, and I get them little no notifications now that you know YouTube changed it a few months ago that you get a no notification if somebody commented on the video, nice video, and I say to myself, hey, wait a minute, this guy didn't even finish watching it. I caught one person doing that, <laughs> so maybe that's why when I explain something. People don't listen. Well, maybe they don't listen because they do not watch the video all the way through. Old 60 volt gold is watching you. <laughs> it's all in fun, folks. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed 
my sharing of this item. I got to get in the house and watch the weather guesses. They should be coming on now. It is 11, 12 a.m. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, everybody. We'll be talking to you.